Okay, today's video will be going over indirect addressing. This will be the short version. Um, I'll show you in a more detailed video on how I did this and how I simulated this um, uh, on a, another video I have that will be posted today as well. So uh, to take up, not to take up too much time, this video will be about 15 minutes, and um, this this video is using RS Logic 5000 uh, version 20 and using on the emulator. Uh, RS Logic's Emulate 5000 chassis, and to, to not get further into it, I just want to show you indirect addressing. Okay, so uh, basically what's happening is we do a move, and in that move, we have uh, the uh, we have brackets, and then we have what's in the brackets is another tag, and then it's closed by a closing bracket. Now in that we have whatever value is in the current state in this instance right here we're using current state is making the state array uh, index through right so basically what's in the current state gets translated to the array state now if <clears throat> and that gets uh, moved into the destination so the current state right now is three if we were to look at this this data type <clears throat> if we were to look at the, the <clears throat> the array that we currently have, then we, we currently have 1 through uh, 50, or 49, so 0 through 49, that's basically 50 words. So what you have is in state 0, it's going to do absolutely nothing. In state 1, it's going to do 1, uh, so bit number 1, our bit 0 will be on. And in state 2, we have bit 2, 3, five, seven, and I believe nine. We have those kind of, uh, turning on. And then in state three, we have just uh, uh, zero and one. State four, we have uh, just two. All right, so to get through with that, so once the, let's, let's go through this again. If the current state is in state one, which it will, index through. If it's in current state 1, then 1 goes into here, and the bits co coinciding with the state array <coughs> will turn on. <coughs> so with that said, if you see right here, we're in state 3, uh, output word or the output of 1 is on, controlling valve 1. If it's in state 0 like it is, nothing is on. As soon as it goes to state 1, again, we don't have anything cutting on. And as soon as it hits state 2, we should have 2, 3, and 5 cutting on. And that means that it this is uh, current state is indexing to state the state array. So the current state is controlling where you're at in here on the, the in, inside the brackets, right? So whether you're on state 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And we can go all the way down to 50 because we made this array of, uh, up to 50 to give ourselves some room to grow. So um, real quick, I'm simulating through that. Um, I did this in another video. Um, you can see that. And like I said, I don't want to go into too much. I'm trying to keep this one short and sweet. So let's, let's go through the tag structure real quick. Okay, so real quick, whatever's in the brackets which is current state, you can name it whatever you want to. Point being is, this is a dent, so if you looked at the tag structure, it would be a dent of 50. So, the state array that I have is a dent of 50, and the current state is a dent by itself. So if you looked at it, let's, let's put it up underneath so it's easier to look at. So put, we'll paste that right here and then we'll paste this uh, inside down here. So, so if you looked, the dent, so whatever the dent value is, this being in, in the indirect addressing spot, are in the brackets, I should say, will make the array index to that value. 
So in the value in this data array it has a value of, of 50. So basically 50 words and this is only one word. So whatever's in this one word will transfer uh, to that individual uh, word within that that basically our array. So in that statement, if the current state, which is the dent, equals one, then it's going to index a one into the state array. So all bits that are set in, in the state array uh, number one. So everything in let's do this. Everything in state array one. All the bits that are set then in state array one would come on once it's in state one. <clears throat> or the current state is in that state one. So easily easily put this equals this which can be controlled control the the outputs are the bits inside of the preset value of of this the state one in the, the state array and again this doesn't have to be the naming culture that you use this can be anything <clears throat> so in another instance we have hold on. <clears throat> sorry about that okay so in the, the next instance, we have current state is a value of 10. So it's going to index uh, a 10 into the state array. So we'll do the same thing right here. Is we'll just basically put this represents uh, the values of state of, of 10 in that array. So the state array is, again, uh, 0 through 49. So 0 through 49 is, is equal to 50 words. So in each word, in each word, there are 32 bit bits. Yep, bits to that can be controlled. Okay, so if that kind of just shows you exactly a representation of, of what happens, the address that it's going to coincide to is going to be on the outside. Okay, this is the address. The indirect address that's inside the brackets it's going to index to the uh, address. Then the address can be used to down to whatever you know bit level inside that 32 bits that you want to use inside whatever um, index you're at. <clears throat> so let's look at this again. All right. So in state two, state two, or in our indirect address two. We have these bits being set. We have bit bit two, we have bit three, and we have bit five, seven, and two are in uh, nine. So when it has hits bit two, then it's going to cut on two, three, and five, right? So vowels two, three, and five. And then when it's at state three, it's only going to cut on one. Now let's let's change that a little bit. So let's say we want to cut on one. We want to cut on one, two, three, and four. Okay. Okay. So in state two, it cuts on all the vowels now, all right? In state three, it's only going to cut on one. So if we wanted to have more in state three, all we have to do is change the uh, array in state one. So instead of having a one or a zero, we could come in and say, well, we want a one here. We want, we want to cut on four. And then that way when it goes through, so when we hit state three, <coughs> did I do state three? I did one. I did one. 
So once it goes to 1, it's going to cut on valve 1 and valve 4, right? So again, if we want to change what happens in state 3, or in, in the address of state 3, we can come in and basically say we want, we want to cut on, let's just say we want to cut on 2 and we don't want to cut on anything else. So in that instance, the next time it hits, so this is a value of 1, this is state 1, this is state 2, which is cutting on everything, and as soon as it goes to 3, it will only cut on 2, and then state 4, <clears throat> so that all co coincides with what's happening in the, the, uh, the 32 bits of whatever address you tell it to go to. So if you tell it to go to zero, the state zero, right, it's going to do nothing. If you tell it to go to state uh, one, it's going to set all the bits coinciding in, the, in inside this state, or inside this this uh, array, or this the 32 bits inside that uh, address. And then this address, state uh, address state two, right? This is going to set all these bits. And then again in state three or, or address three, it's going to set the bits that are coinciding in the 32 bits that it has. So you can use this in a very elaborate way or you can, you know, use this as, as, as simple as you want to. I mean, the, the sky's the limit on indirect addressing. I mean, you can, you can use it for many different things. I kind of used uh, the representation of a state machine um, just a real cut and dry way, um, just to kind of kind of show you. But uh, just keep in mind that the address and the indirect address is going to look the, the tag structure is going to look like that. The indirect address is always going to be in the brackets, and that is going to so the indirect address, the indirect address equals address right <clears throat> so it's written like this but it it's basically explained like this so whatever's in the indirect address is going to equal whatever address that is so if a one happens here a one's going to happen here but whatever's in that value of one you could be controlling one you could be controlling, you know, because this goes all the way. To 31. <clears throat> so, you know, as this keeps going, you could, you know, basically it's the same thing, right? Right two, and it just keeps going to 31. So whatever's in this, this uh, address right here is going to make whatever's preset inside the uh, address you're telling it to go to um, cut on or cut off depending upon the state that is, or depending upon what you have pre-configured inside this this array over here so you can have whatever you want to in that array um, <clears throat> I recommend making a spreadsheet for it it's really easy to keep track of um, again I wrote some simple logic to kind of index through um, I actually changed this to 1 through 50 um, <clears throat> But again, I did that in another video, and I set this up from scratch on another video. So if you'd like to see the other video, I'll, I'll have it in the show notes below. Um, it's about 45 minutes, but it does help you, you know, understand exactly the way indirect addressing is set up from the very start from scratch. And gets a little bit more detailed, so uh, it might be kind of more value added. I just wanted to kind of put this together as a short and sweet method. And I'll be making a uh, article on this on my website, uh, onlineplcsupport.com, and that'll be in the show notes below. Um, I've yet to do that, but it will be on there, and uh, probably be doing that after the uh, RS Tech Ed that we're going to next week. But I just wanted to, to kind of illustrate uh, real quick how to do indirect addressing and see, you know, give you some value. So 
Okay, well, um, if you like this, let me know. Uh, leave a comment below on stuff you'd like to see, um, stuff you you know you, you feel like you, you'd want to know more about. And I'd be glad to make a video on it. Um, and also, I'll be making articles, like I said, on my website, onlineplcsupport.com. Um, it's a, it's a, a constantly gr growing website. It's not uh, something that you know is, is already done, but um, I will be probably putting together a a a step by step programming. Met, you know, kind of you know, whether it be an ebook or whether it be you know a small training course. It's you know on, you know something really low cost. You know, everybody's trying to start out somewhere and everybody needs to kind of refresh and, and retool themselves. So um, I think this would be very value added. We can't all afford those, you know, twelve to thirteen hundred dollar uh, Rockwell training classes. And this is just a, a quick way to, to go about it to show you, you know, exactly what to do. So not to get too far into that. Um, thank you for your time. I said I said I'd keep it under six, uh, 15 minutes, but I kept it under 16. So uh, real quick. Thank you, and um, look at the show notes below. Leave me a comment, and subscribe if you want to. I have more videos coming out. Thank you.